Michelle here with Just For Sweets. Today I am doing two DIYs, mostly Dollar Tree items, but not all. Some are some repurposed items, things I got at the thrift store. Nevertheless, they're super fun, super cute, and great for Valentine's Day. Uh, gnomes were extremely popular at Christmas time, so I am going to do my version of a Valentine's gnome, and I am also going to make salt lanterns. If you all know about salt lamps, this is my version of a salt lamp in lantern form using essential oils and Himalayan sea salt. So this is gonna be really fun. I hope you enjoy it. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified every time I download a video. And let's get started on this fun project. So what I'm gonna be using to make these seesaw little, uh, I don't know what you wanna call them, lanterns. Uh, that's what I'll call them, sea salt lanterns. Um, it's very simple. Most of the items are from Dollar Tree, but you are going to have to go and find some things somewhere else. Now, if you don't want to use uh, the pink sea salt, you could substitute it with the Epsom salt, but I'm kind of going in the theme of the salt lamps that are out and creating my own little um, sea salt lantern. So, you can use your uh, candlesticks that you get at the Dollar Tree. That's where I got this one. They usually have them on hand. We went through a spell where we had zero. Um, I'm finding them a little bit more now, but if you can't find them at your Dollar Tree, you can also go to your local thrift store. I did find some at the thrift store as well. Actually, I went thrift store shopping yesterday and I got quite a few and they usually are anywhere between 50 cents and $1.50 depending on what you get. I got this one for 50 cents so um, you can get some really good deals at the thrift store as well. I am using a repurposed Bath and Body Works jar. Uh, this had a Bath and Body Works candle in it. And when I'm done with the candles, I always clean these out. I have a video on how I uh, clean them out and get them prepped to make crafts with. I will link that in the description box below. So you can use one of these, or you can also get these little fish bowls that they have at the Dollar Tree. They have them in large and small size. This is the small one. You, ooh, as I break it, <laughs> don't wanna do that. Uh, you can use this. Uh, they also have some other jars that you can use. So whatever you decide is, is what's gonna be best. I went and got my uh, pink Kalean sea salt at Ross and I got this entire bag for $3.99. So that's a good deal because you're not going to use a ton. You can also use some other spices in these. Like I made one that had cloves in it. Um, you can use some cinnamon sticks. You can use any herbs that you think are going to set off an aroma that you will like. I also used uh, the doTERRA uh, essential oils in mine. Today I'm going to use Serenity and Balance to make a lamp. And so um, if you have essential oils, use what is best for you. Look them up though and see what each essential oil does for you and how it can help in whatever area you're going to place your sea salt lamp. Um, my daughter is a doTERRA rep, so I will put her link in the description box below. She also has her own channel called Chelsea and Family. I will also link that below, but these are the doTERRA oils, which I really like their blends a lot. Uh, what I'm going to paint these with, this is going to be pretty simple. The one that I made at work had a colored stand and then it was just a clear top. It was like that, um, which is very pretty. However, today I'm going to use the Krylon Sea Glass. I used a lot of this at Christmas when I was creating my candy jars and all it does is it gives everything like this frosted effect. And so I'm gonna paint my glass my bottoms and my tops with the sea glass, which I've never done a full set. So the first thing you want to do is paint these and they are going to take approximately 
I like to give them at least six to 12 hours to dry completely. Usually this dries a lot quicker than that. As crafters, we get a little bit impatient, so I usually pull it after maybe an hour, um, and then I will glue these together with some E6000, but for right now, I'm going to go take this out into my garage, and I'm going to do a light coat. I typically flip the jar over. This is the way I do it. Now, you can do one of two ways. You can pre-glue with the E6000, but once you do that, you have to wait 24 hours before you paint it because you really want that E6000 to adhere. Or you can paint them separately, and if I do that, I usually flip this one upside down because I don't really want the paint to go inside. Do it upside down, spray paint it. Usually it takes one coat if I do it pretty evenly, sometimes two, depending on how well I coat it. But you also don't want to overcoat. You want to make sure you get about eight to 12 inches away when you're spraying at least so that it's not like, you know, you don't have that runoff on there. Uh, with the candlesticks, I just leave them upright and I kind of go around them. I usually have to do two coats on the candlesticks. And what I'll do is once it's dry, I'll flip it over and I'll do it this way because you want the paint to really get down into these crevices. And so sometimes that's a little bit harder with all these grooves in the candlestick. The smoother surface is definitely a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this where I spray paint them separately and then I will glue them together. So I'm going to go start doing that. And then I will show you the mixture of the sea salt that we're going to do. Now, what I forgot to mention is this is kind of a Valentine's DIY for me. I am making these and selling them on my station at work, as you all know, or most of you know, I am a hairstylist and I do sell these crafts at my station. So when these are done, I do like to decorate them with some type of ribbon. Ribbon. So I have like, you know, the Buffalo check ribbons. I have some burlap looking ribbons. This is just Baker's twine. There's all different kinds of ribbon that I have going on in here. So I always like to put some kind of bow or some kind of decor onto uh, my lamp as soon as it's done. Now, if you want it year round and you have a theme, the Buffalo check, like let's, for example, you have a farmhouse rustic theme. This is great year round. It does not have to be just Valentine's. Um, these are really great to have out all the time. You will have to refresh your essential oils at some point as they wear off, but I wanted to throw that in there. I usually do that and I'll throw in some, um, I usually throw in like a pearl or something in the middle of the ribbon, but I wanted to share that with you and uh, I'm gonna get a bowl. We're gonna get started making these uh, salts for our little jar. Okay, so I couldn't find a clear bowl. I want you to be able to see, so I'm just gonna use one on my, um, Pyrex dishes that I that I put my food in. Uh, I do have an old Himalayan salt that I'm going to use up before I start using another one. This one's a little bit more grainy, uh, not quite as. This one's coarse. I guess that's a better word to use, not grainy. Um, so this is a little bit more of a coarse salt. You can go coarse or fine. I prefer to have a little bit of coarseness to it. Yesterday they did not have the coarse salt, so this one is a little bit more of a finer powder. But I'm going to mix the two together. And they're actually perfect for Valentine's Day if you use the pink salt because it's Valentine's Day and they're pink. So that goes really great with the theme. You can use sea salt. You can use, like I said, Epsom salt, but you want to use some kind. Don't use like the iodized salt that you get in the store. You want to use something that's a little bit more natural. So go ahead and stick those in there. I don't want a ton, but I want enough that it's going to cover See, I prefer the, the uh, more coarse salt than I do the thinner salt, but I'm gonna mix them together. It's not going to fill the whole jar. It's literally going to be just at the bottom. You'll see when we fill that up. So um, you can put as much or as little salt as you want. And as I told you today, I'm going to use the doTERRA Balance and Serenity for some peace and some balance in my life. <laughs> so I'm gonna use roughly about 10 drops of each. Um, I don't really count. I'm not that neurotic. I just kind of shake, kind of keep track in my head. And it doesn't make your bowl all oily either. It's actually just a really nice, soothing thing to have out. I have one, the one I made is at work, 
and it has, I know this sounds like a weird combination, but it, to me it's very energetic, lemon and peppermint together. And I have some clove, some natural clove, not oil in there. And it's beautiful and all my clients sit down and they're like, it smells very minty right here. And it just, I don't know, it was, it's just really nice to have at my station. I also have a little LED tea light in it that lights it up, so that's even prettier. So you just kind of take your hand, you mix it together. Yeah, it smells great, it smells exactly like I want it to. You can add a little bit more if you like. Now, if you don't like it overpowering, add less. If you like it stronger, add more. Um, I like the scent to really stand out because that's what it's for. It's a, it's a sea salt lamp. Um, what, you can Google, I was gonna say, why don't you? You can, um, you can Google like the benefits of sea salt lamps. So just mix that up. And like I said, at this point, you can add any herbs to decorate it up. You can add sage. You can add anything that's, you know, like I said, I added clove to mine um, and that will make it super pretty as well. So we're gonna wait for that uh, lamp to dry and then we will go ahead and glue it together and we will get decorating. So speaking of which, where you can throw in the cloves and stuff, um, I messed up this little rose. I was making a craft and I cut the bottom off and you can see there's some glue under there and I'm like, well, I don't really wanna throw it away. Now you can throw these rose petals in there and make it look very Valentine's-y. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off. You can use big rose petals if you like, but because this is a smaller, you know, dish type of thing, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these rose petals off and I'm going to put them into the sea salt. And all they're really gonna do is absorb some of that oil that's in there and make it sort of like, I wanna say like a potpourri kind of thing. Um, but that way I'm not wasting it and it makes it super pretty for Valentine's Day. Now you can add it now or you can add it once you put it in the lamp. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up and just leave them in here. And you can see how it's going to make our lamp just give it that extra Valentine's touch. So somehow I lost the footage of how I glued these together, but I will link a video down below of when I made my candy jars at Christmas time out of repurposed Bath and Body Works candle jars and I show you exactly how I glue these together. So this has been gluing for 24 hours with E6000, uh, and you can see now the frosted appearance that that sea glass spray paint does. Now this is just one coat, so you can make it a lot frostier. It does not have to be um, such a light frost, but I like to be able to see through it pretty well. So I just did one coat, made it pretty simple. I will be decorating this a little bit. I'm not quite sure how yet, but here are the salts that we made yes yesterday. I made them yesterday. <laughs> These are the uh, sea salts that I made um, for this particular item with the little rose petals in it. So all you're gonna do is kind of pour these right into your candle jar and you might have to move things around so the rose petals don't get stuck completely at the bottom. Again, this is a matter of preference on how, how little or how much salt you want. That's about what I want. I don't want it to be completely full. I just want it to be able to have that aroma of those essential oils. So with that, you can add an LED candle in the middle. You can leave it as is. Um, you can add some lavender, like some fresh lavender to this and just like mix it up in there uh, because that also goes with that whole serenity and balance thing. Also makes you a little bit, you know, more relaxed. So um, that's just another idea we have. So what I like to put in there are these little LED battery operated candles that you can get at the Dollar Tree. They're like the little tea light candles. This is one that's left over from Christmas. So it's sparkly red, which I think goes great with Valentine's Day. So. You can use the white ones or they have gold, they have silver. Um, you can use the ones that are a little bit taller, but I just really like these. So I have it turned on and it goes really well with the red rose petals in there. And so you stick it in there and then it also helps illuminate this glass. And then, you know, you get a little bit more of that aroma of the oils in there. So that's just one idea. I'm going to come back and um, show you, I'm going to, I have to go to work now. So I'm going to come back later and I'm going to show you how I decorate this jar. Now you can leave it completely as is, or I have like these little Buffalo ribbons that I bought. Um, 
think at Christmas time from Walmart that you can add on there the little checked. I don't know that it goes with the sparkly candle, so I'm gonna play around a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll decorate this together. Okay, so on to decorating. I've had a really tough time for some reason getting my mind wrapped around how to decorate this salt lamp. So if you have any ideas, would you please leave those in the comment section for me? Give me your idea. Would you leave it plain? Would you glam it up and use some Dollar Tree rhinestone ribbon? Uh, what would be the way that you um, decorated this to make it just a little bit more uh, either farmhouse style or glam? Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is I told you, you know, to use the LEDs from the Dollar Tree, which are great, um, and not to really use a candle inside because then the candle is going to go, the wax is going to go all over the salt. However, you can use the regular tea light candles that Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree carries, and I may actually replace this eventually with that. But for right now, for the holiday, I'm going to go ahead and continue to use this little LED a uh, candle from Dollar Tree. These do burn out fast and you can change batteries in them. However, I would rather just buy another pack of two. So what I decided to do, so I was really, really stuck. I have this really cute ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It's kind of a burlapy ribbon with a sparkly heart, which would go great with that sparkly candle, right? So I thought about that. Uh, I also thought about this really pretty plaid ribbon that I got on clearance at Walmart um, on my Walmart haul. Um, I can link that video down below. And this is a really nice ribbon. And I thought about doing that and then putting a really pretty red heart in the middle. And so I almost did that. These are just little wooden hearts. I have had these for years, probably 10 years. They're really thin. Um, they were, came already painted. So you can buy wooden hearts and paint them or use Dollar Tree items and take the hearts off of them. So I thought about doing that, which would also be a super cute idea. But I, then I went back to the Buffalo check is so popular right now. And I thought, well, what's something that people could do that they could uh, you know, have this all year long in their home if they would like and, you know, go with their decor. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll just stick with the Buffalo check ribbon. Now these, again, I got at Walmart. They actually, um, I don't know what this is. I think it's just to make it stiff. Uh, they are actually already tied. They came on a board. Did I get these at Walmart? I don't know if I got these at Walmart. I may have gotten these at Michael's. Don't quote me on that. Um, and I had shown you that, um, oh, you know where I got these? I got these at Big Lots. It just popped in my head. Um, and I got these on clearance as well. So you can, it came to me that, you know what, I'm just gonna stick with the Buffalo check theme because that seems to be where everybody's at right now. But I wanted to kind of Valentine's it up. So in that package of little hearts that I have, I have these little white ones. And white will stand out really pretty on that red and I think make it more farmhousey. So I will only put a little dab of glue on that so that when the holiday's over, I can take that heart off super easy and then I can have it all year long or I can find like a little flower and put it there for Easter, spring, um, be able to interchange that. And you can interchange it with hot glue. You just have to use a little dab. I, I did repurpose a candy jar that I made that had a snowman on it and the snowman was on a ribbon and I just took the snowman off um, it doesn't take much force with hot glue and I pulled it off and put uh, a heart on there instead. So um, that's what I'm going to do. You do not have to have a pre-tied ribbon. Go ahead and get yourself some uh, buffalo check ribbon or use a ribbon of your choice. And uh, there's a lot of people that do some really good bows out there. One of them is Olivia's Romantic Home. She does great bow tutorials or you can make yourself just a simple bow. Yeah, simple bow. <laughs> can I talk? No. It is morning and I haven't had, I've only had a half a cup of coffee. Okay, so I'm gonna put some hot glue right here in the center. I can't bring my glue gun over there, sorry guys. I'm just not set up that way yet. So I put some glue in the center. I had it all preheated and I'm just gonna kind of stick it right here in the center where that bow can really be seen. And I like to hold it on to make sure it's secure before I let go. And you can see that dresses it up. I wanna make sure it's straight. I'm not looking at it, so. I'm gonna to have to tear it off for a second, put a little bit more glue on it. 
just a dab, just a dab will do. Have you ever heard that? Okay, so I'm gonna put it and do it facing me so I can get it a little bit straighter because I have a thing about things being crooked. I'm a hairdresser, so no one wants crooked. <laughs> All right, so there, it's tied on, it's glued on there. Now you can secure it a little bit more. Sometimes I do that and I'll glue behind the bow itself and kind of attach it. But I'm just gonna leave it pretty simple in case I ever wanna change the decor on it. So there's that, and then I'm just gonna take one of these cute little white hearts. Now you could do one or two, overlap them. I'm just gonna do one, because I'm trying to make this pretty basic and simple. So I put this little dab of glue on the back of the heart, and I'm just gonna stick it straight in the center. Just like this. And there you go, that's how basic this is. But like I said, please leave in the comments below how you would want to decorate your uh, sea salt lantern uh, to make it year round so that you can change it up. Or if, you know, you would do it just like this. Um, but I would love suggestions. I always am in for a little bit of help. So that's how that one turned out and I still smell the amazing uh, doTERRA oils in it and that was the whole point in it. Now I do think if you put a tea light candle in it that has a regular flame, that you might get a little bit more of those essential oil um, smells coming up um, because of the heat. And so that's what I will probably switch to after the holiday. But for now, just to make it a decor piece, I think this looks really super cute for Easter. And this would be a great gift for anyone. They would love it. Who doesn't love a little balance and serenity in their life? So let's move on and finish up that gnome. Now on to the next project. I am going to show you how to make these sweet, adorable, don't look at my craft table, <laughs> Valentine's gnomes. Very economical, mostly Dollar Tree items, not all, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this mop is from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna show you how I created, I call it a her because I put little braids in the front. And I might show you two different ways if I have time. If not, then we'll do this, this one this time. But, some of the things that you're going to need, and this can be very economical, is a bag of beans. I'm using the lentils. Um, I think in this one, I use the northern beans or something. Um, you can get them fairly inexpensive, even at the grocery store, but I got a bag of these at the Dollar Tree. I got this bundle of socks. I'm gonna stick, I believe I have red, to the red theme, yeah. Um, actually, We'll do the other one, black and red. Um, so this is a sock that I got at, we have a store called Grocery Outlet. Now I don't know how many of you have those, but they do have a small section. This is blue, I probably won't use this one. I'll probably use the red one. Um, they have a section where they have some socks and stuff. And I found that these actually work perfect if you wanna like get more for your money. So for three pairs of these men's socks, it's $3.99. I use the bottom part for the gnome and the top part for the hat. Now, if you can't find the tube socks, sometimes Dollar Tree has them. They're the diabetic socks or there's like the extra warm ones and they have actually this tube looking sock. I got them at Christmas time. I have not been able to find them since but they also made a great gnome and you can use two in one. So basically, it's very, very inexpensive to use the one sock. Now, if that is not an option for you, you can use a white tube sock. You can use any tube sock you want. Um, I do keep the beans in the bag. I do find that then they don't leak out everywhere. Um, and I like it because I get the mobility out of them. You can use, for the hats, you can use um, the cute little Valentine socks that the Dollar Tree has right now, uh, which would be adorable. And I am gonna get some of those made here shortly. They also have like their fuzzy socks. Uh, I got these at Christmas time. I got these actually yesterday, but I did use them at Christmas time on my gnomes and they're kind of sparkly, really super pretty. Uh, you can use these as the hats as well, the hats and the bodies, but you might need a whole set to use a hat and a body. You can kind of play by ear, depending on how big your 
Metronome is. This is an old one from the Dollar Tree that I got that my daughter lost the other one. So I have that as a backup. Um, if you watch my Dollar Tree haul, Valentine's haul, I'll link that below. You can see some of the things I got. These cute socks make a good Valentine. And then they have the bandanas. Uh, yesterday I was at Ross, were these Ross? No, these were from um, my uh, Target dollar spot haul. You can actually, I saw a video yesterday where she used this and made a hat, which I may do that as well. How cute would that be on a gnome for a hat? Adorable, right? I wish I would have grabbed some more of these towels. I really do, because I really don't want to use them as dish towels because then they just get stained and dirty, and these are so nice. I really, really wish I would have grabbed more, but I only grabbed one set. So you could use either one of these for a hat. Um, I did grab some yesterday as well at Ross. Oh, they're right here. And these were very inexpensive too. The ones at um, Target were $5 for two. These are the ones you can't really use this one as a hat. That's good for a pillow. And then you could use this side for a hat. I got these at Ross, like I said, for $3.99 for two towels. So it's actually cheaper than the Target dollar spot. I kind of like the quality of the, the ta uh, uh, Target dollar spot towels better. So like I said, I wish I would have grabbed more. But those are some options for you I wanted to share. So this is what we're gonna do to get started. You have your sock, you take the beans. This is how easy it is. You stick the beans inside and I just shake them down like that, just like that. And then what you wanna do is you want to have some elastic rubber bands. You can get an entire bag of these at the Dollar Tree. I, I'm telling you, there's like a hundred in the bag. That's where I get them. So I go ahead and I make sure it's down there and right at the top of the beans, I can feel the bag of the beans, I put the rubber band around quite a few times. But you don't wanna break it, so don't go too tight. <laughs> Now over time, rubber bands can wear out and they get old and frail and gross. So what I do to ensure, I, I like to get that on there pretty tight. So I'm gonna go one more time. What I do to ensure that these are going to last is I take a zip tie. Now these are not the ones from the Dollar Tree. You can get small zip ties from the Dollar Tree. These are actually my husband's zip ties and <laughs> I steal them out of his stock in the garage. So, oh, I'm going the wrong way. You wanna go ahead and you wanna put that zip tie. I just put it around where the rubber band is and just tie it as tight as it'll go. Then I go ahead and I clip the excess. You just wanna make sure it's tight enough though. And in the right spot, and then I just clip that excess zip tie off. There you go. The next thing you wanna do is I go about an inch above where the zip tie is and I cut the sock. So let me see if you can make sure you can see that. My camera thing, tripod is not working very well. Go an inch above and I cut. So there is the base of our gnome. And here, is the hat, as you can see, right? Now, one thing I do, and this is just my own preference, I started doing this at Christmas time when I was making them, because they tend to fall over so many times. I mean, you can push them down to make sure they are steady. You do not have to do this step. This is just something I do. I had bought this bag of wood slices from Amazon, and I can share that with you below if you like. Uh, and I glue that to the bottom of my gnome. And that just gives it a little bit more steadiness so that it doesn't just keep tipping over. So that's just a little tip and trick that I do. Um, I'd love to know what your tips and tricks are for your gnomes. Is there anything you do different when you make yours? This is how I do mine and it seems to work great. It also gives it a little bit more lift. So um, now we're gonna go on to the hair, which would be a Dollar Tree mop and I probably have bought them out several times. So I have one left to make this DIY and I'm gonna grab that and show you what I do. This is what the top of the mop looks like. You can see that there was a pole attached here. You just unscrew it, super easy. I had these poles laying all over my house. 
I was trying to figure out a way to repurpose them. If you know a way to repurpose the poles of the Dollar Tree mop, please let me know. My daughter was using them as basically um, fighting toys. We had to we had to fight our daughter like play fight, <laughs> and they were like starting to break, and then the metal's dangerous, so. Um, I just ended up throwing them away, but if you have any ideas, I hate to throw things away, especially when I'm buying huge quantities of them. Uh, let me know what you can do, to, what you do to repurpose those mop handles. So the good thing about the Dollar Tree mops is they separate right there. So right away, you've got hair. And I do leave the top of the mop up, just like this. So my glue gun is heating up right now. I can't glue it right now. Um, but as soon as it's ready, I just kind of put the glue right here in the center and I put a good amount of glue here, probably the size between a nickel and a quarter. And then I take it and I just hold it down. So as soon as I get that glue going, I'll show you how I do that. And you can see how it's starting to form already. Now, while the glue heats up, as far as the nose goes, there are different options. Uh, I don't have all the options sitting in front of me, but I will explain them to you. Uh, if you have any small, like little small from the mini trees, uh, Christmas ornaments, those work super well. I use those at the beginning of the season as a nose. Um, you can also get wooden beads depending on what size you want. I got these on Amazon, but you can get them on, um, not on, you can get them on Hobby Lobby or you can go to Hobby Lobby, you can go to Michael's, you can go to any of those places and get some wooden beads. If you can find anything that's round, I saw a video where a girl used plastic fake grapes. So it really depends on what you have on hand. See if you have anything to create a nose. Now I tend to like the gnome's nose bigger, so I use giant wooden beads that I got. They're not even beads, they're just balls. They're wood balls that you get at Michael's, and they are $4.99 for 10 of them. But I use a coupon, so I usually get them 40 to 50% off, and you get 10 of them. So that breaks down the price really well. You get quite a few gnomes, you get 10 gnomes for the noses. So basically you break it down to, let's say, almost $3 for 10 of them. So what, about 30 cents a piece? And then that's what I use as my nose to glue on for my gnome. And you can see it's right there. I really like these just because they're like the natural wood. But like I said, you can use anything you like. Okay, my glue gun is nice and hot and I cannot get it in the camera right now. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick some glue right here and I will show you what I do. So there's quite a bit of glue in there. I just take that, it's hot, so be careful. And I just kind of separate it and I stick it right in the middle and then I press it down because I want to make sure that it really, really glues on there. So I press it on, let that adhere a little bit. And then what I do, because I have that little piece in here and it kind of pops up, which is okay, because it's not going anywhere, it kind of drives me crazy. So I'm gonna stick some more glue underneath there, see you can see where I stick it, and then I just kind of like that. Now what I do is I take a few of these pieces of mop to cover that glue, plus I want to bring some to the front. So I kind of stick them right there and let those, let those dry. And then I do the same exact thing. You can even stick a couple more if you like. Sometimes I'll do that, depending on you know what look I'm going for. I think today I'm gonna braid the front like a beard. So this will really adhere the glue and I just kind of push everything a little bit forward like that. See and then it kind of closes that up a little bit. See if you see that. So you're gonna repeat that same step on the back. Just fiddle with it until you get it to where you want it. And remember the hat's gonna go over that anyway. I'm gonna show you my trick too. I, I can't stand this thing <laughs> sticking up, but it gives it height, so I like that. So I'm gonna kind of show you my little tip and trick on what I do. You're gonna think I'm crazy to kind of cover that up. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is that I go to the bottom and I showed you that I put these wood slices. But like I said, you can leave it just the way it is. But I like this for a little bit of extra support. So I'm gonna put some hot glue on this. 
and I put quite a bit of hot glue. I'll show you. I kind of cover the whole circle. I'm gonna go down here a little bit. And then I just kind of try to like center it as best as can as I can, not as can, can I talk? No. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> it's my Monday, I have to work. So I'm trying to get my videos done here. And you can see that it just kind of gives it that little bit of extra support so it's not tipping one way or the other. Now you can get little wood pieces at, I'm sure you can get some type of wood slice or wood cut out, you can make your own, um, but that's what I like to do. Now, the one thing you can do is you can leave the hair is what I call it, the way it is. To me, it looks a little dreadlocky, <laughs> but I wanna decide which side is the front and which side is the back, and I think this is the one I decided to be the front. And before I unravel all these to make the hair like you saw in my last one, I am going to actually do a braid. So I'm gonna take six pieces total. Let's see, one, two, well, I might take seven because I'll put three in the middle. And then I'm going to braid this part of it. And the reason I'm doing this, actually, you know what? You're gonna see me change my mind because I have to put the nose on first. And typically I put the nose on last, but because I want to do a braid on this, I am going to put the nose on right now. So I pick a side and I always know I've made so many gnomes. I know that roughly the nose goes about right here. Uh, and I can carry, you know, bring my hat down to match that. You pick which direction you want the nose to go. I think I'm gonna go that way. So you put a little bit of hot glue. I'll show you right there on the nose. I use quite a bit because I really want it to stick. This is kind of a heavy ball and I just hold it there. Now, typically what I would do is hold this here and I would take some pieces, which I might, I kind of cover right there. Just like I do at the top, you can see that I've kind of created that little space and that kind of wraps the nose around, or the hair around the nose. I can't even talk, I'm so sorry. So I put it a little bit further up than I normally do, but that's because I wanna do a braid down here. So I hold that on, let that glue on. As Soon as that adheres, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do a braid. Okay, so what I like to do with him, I told you I was going to do a braid underneath his little nose here, or his big nose, whatever you wanna call it. But before I attach the hat or anything else, I like to unravel these. Uh, you can keep them just as they are, if you like. You can keep him just like this. To me, it reminds me of dreadlocks. So, you know, it's all preference. I personally like to unwind these. I'm going to leave the few that I'm going to braid. So I'll kind of count those off. So one, two, I think I'll do three. I might change that, so don't quote me on that. So I'm gonna leave these plus the two that I glued underneath the nose. I'm just gonna kind of put those aside and find a way to clip him. And then we're gonna start unraveling uh, his hair. Okay, so I found... Oh my goodness, you guys. So I just made this whole thing without my camera being on. <laughs> I was talking to myself while I was wrapping my turban here. Okay, so I can't really unravel it at this point, but what I did is I stuck some glue in the center, I tucked the handle in, I kind of twisted my bag like this, and I start wrapping, ooh, there's some hot glue on there. Ah, there's hot glue on there, be careful. Um, I kind of wrap it around, now I'm gluing myself together, ow, I'm burning myself. Um, that's what happens when you have a blooper and you talk to yourself and realize, oh, my camera's not on. <laughs> So what I was saying is your bag will, I'm gonna get some of the glue off my fingers. I'm not eating it now, but I am pulling it off. Okay, oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that, I can. That's just my luck, but. So we lost the footage of how I put this on. So if you have any questions, let me know and I will try to do something again. But it represents a tur turban. I just kind of twist it, loosen it up. The whole purpose for it is to 
really create some cushion so that you don't have this hard plastic thing that sticks out of your hat. Okay, hopefully you got all that. If one isn't enough for you, you can add two. I usually just add one. If you want your hat to have some more height, you can add another one. I've done it where I've added another one on top of here, almost like a snowman effect. But there's my turban on my dude, and for some reason I gotta adjust my beans, and okay. I hope to God I got the braid on there. If, if I didn't get the braid, <laughs> I'll have to redo that as well. But hopefully I did. I don't know. Did I? I better look. Okay, so no, I did not get the footage of my braid. I so apologize to you. I also talked to my camera for about a minute and a half, thinking I was talking to you guys, and just realized I went back on my footage and no footage of how I did the braid. So, I can't undo it because I already tied it with twine. <laughs> what I'm going to tell you though is remember I saved three on this side, three on this side, and then you had the two that were in the center. So I just did a regular braid, used my twisty tie to hold the braid together. Remember the twisty tie that I was holding it with when I unraveled it? Then I cut a piece of my jute twine, which I had some left over from another project. You can also get that at the Dollar Tree. I left this in while I tied this onto the braid and tied it in a knot for now. And I've left these strings until I know what to do. So there is a little rundown of how I did this. This was my very first time doing a braid on a gnome. So I truly, truly apologize. Now I'm gonna have to go back and see what footage I've lost altogether <laughs> because I have no idea if I've pushed the right buttons the whole time. So the turban is on. Now, if you remember correctly, I gotta find my hat because I've been crafting a lot and everything's getting pushed to the side. I cut the sock at the beginning and here is the leftover piece and this is going to be his hat. So I just take that over the top you can see how it's starting to come together, right? And I just kind of start adjusting till I have the look I want. I like the hat to be a little bit more scrunchy. Um, this is a tight fit. This isn't as loose as if you use the Dollar Tree socks. So like if you use these socks like I showed you, they've got a little bit more give, so they're not quite so tight, but it just depends on what you want to use. So I really do like this black, red, and gray together. I think it's cute. So I just kind of adjust it and, you know, just get the fuzzies off. These mops do tend to get fuzzy. But the very first thing I like to do is decide where I want the hat to fit on his nose. I know that sounds weird, but that's what I like to do. And I usually like it to be like right at the top of his nose and I don't want it to slip and socks will slip. So I always like to add some glue underneath. So you just add a little bit of hot glue underneath that part of the hat or the nose or the bit, whatever, you know what I mean. And it just kind of secures it down. So once it's dry, it won't move. I then also like to glue underneath the hat a few spots around to make sure that my hat is secure. So before you do that, make sure you have the look of your hat that you want, which is what I'm doing now. And you're gonna start, I, you, you can do this. This is an option, you don't have to. I just like my hats to stay in place. I'm kind of weird like that. So I'm gonna add some glue underneath in the back. And it's underneath there and I just secure that hat down. I just push it. I do one on this side, one on this side. And if you want more than that, you can do more. If you want less, you can do less. It's just kind of where like the main points of the hat are, the front, the back, and the two sides, north, east, southwest. And I, voila, I've got him glued together. The other thing I like to do, again, an option, his braid, like you can let his little braid move around, but I wanna make sure some hair stays around that sock, right? Like I want it to be filled in. Well, the, the mop tends to move. You do not have to do this, but what I do is I move the hair and I put a line of hot glue right there. So right next to where I really want it to stick and I don't do separate pieces, I just take a clump of it and using what I said in video footage I think I lost, I comb that down with my fingernails because my fingernails are my tool as a hairdresser and I kind of push it in there. Now you want to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to leave his braid loose. So again, hot glue, 
Be careful not to burn yourself. Take some of the hair and just kind of push it on there. Now that obviously it's not all glued on there. I mean, if you want to fill it in more, you can. I kind of just want it just to give it a little bit of extra. And then sometimes I will do the same all the way around. Like I'll move some of the hair and I'll put a few little lines of the glue just to hold some hair kind of in place in these places. But you do not have to do this, just so you know. This is just something that I started doing and I like how it helps the hair just kind of stay in place. So, and then I do it in the back because remember at the beginning, the mop has two sides that we glued down and that's where it splits. And even though it's probably not gonna split, I still kind of put a little bit of glue right there. So I'm kind of a glue freak, can you tell? All right, so we're pushing that down and there's that part of our little gnome, right? And you can keep adjusting the hat. I glued it, but adjust it to where you want it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to tie, and you can even adjust the bag that's in there. We're going to tie, I like to tie like a little bit of twine. Find my twine again. I'm showing you I had some leftover twine. I think I showed you that in my video that I thought I recorded, but I didn't. And so I'm gonna just kind of cut some twine. You can use yarn, you can use ribbon, you can use whatever you want. I personally am using twine. And going around, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna decorate this yet. And I just kind of tie a little knot. Now you can tie it up here like I do. My bag is irritating me. Or you can tie it down here if that's what you prefer to do. I always leave all the string until I know exactly how I'm gonna decorate it. I do have these leftover hearts that I've had for years that I found. Now this one has some goopy glitter on it. I don't really want that. I also bought these hearts on Amazon and they're just the natural wood. So I think I might use that instead of using the red against the red. And since I have twine, right, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that twine right through that heart and I'm gonna leave it natural because it, it can be totally a natural look and just be super cute and rustic looking. So I'm gonna do that. Tie another knot into this to make sure it stays. Now feel free to paint your heart. You can paint it white, you can, no, you can, you can paint it white, you can paint it black. Actually black would be really cute on that as well. Um, I might do that with another one, or you never know, I may take this off and start over and do black, but it kind of matches the nose, right? So that's just if you want to decorate him pretty simple, and I think he's pretty simple. Um, you can add, I do have um, some little red hearts, and like I've said in my previous videos, you can get like Dollar Tree hearts or whatever you want. Um, here's a pink one. I don't think I want to do pink because of the red, but you can glue this little one there. Here's a red one, but it's stuck together, so I have to unstick it, but see how you can stick a little red one there? Maybe we'll do that if I can get this unstuck. Um, I don't know if you like more of that natural wood look. Well, you guys, I can't get this unstuck, so there's nothing I can do because I have little red hearts that are completely stuck together. Let's see if I can find any that aren't. Aha, I found one that's not stuck together. Okay, so let's put these back in here. So you can take this and you can add a little dab of glue, just like I think I used a white heart on my lantern. You can use the red heart on here. You can use a glittery heart. You can do whatever you want. I think I'm gonna leave him just like that. I think he's super, super cute, right? Make sure my heart's straight. I'm having trouble with that today. But it would also be cute with a black heart. So that's kind of what I do down here. I thought I was gonna do a bow, which I guess I could. I can try, I don't know. You guys, I am so sorry about the footage. I cannot believe I had such a blonde moment and forgot to push, forgot to push the record button as I'm talking to my camera. Okay, so there, he's got just a little bow. I left enough to leave a little bow. Okay, so there's one more step, but I'll be right back. Actually, I lied, there's two more steps. <laughs> but you're okay with that, right? These are easy steps. So I have some blush. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I belong to Ipsy, so I get a monthly subscription, a little makeup bag that comes filled with all this little makeup. 
And some of the makeup I use, some I don't, but I always hold on to it and I either give it to my daughters or I hold on to it for crafts or I give it away, you know, like if my daughter, sorry, my camera is not wanting to cooperate here. Uh, I give it away like if someone, if my daughter is going to a birthday party and it's a real girly girl because she's not and we make like a little makeup bag up. So again, I'm one of those people that holds on to everything. Um, I have given some away just because I know I never use it, but a lot of it I use and a lot of it I like to use for crafts. So anyway, with that said, in my Ipsy bag, I got some blush. Now you can use blush from the Dollar Tree. If you don't have blush or use your own blush, you can use a blush brush if you want. I prefer to use my finger because I have a little bit more control. This is really not as pink as I like it to be, but that's okay. And then you just kind of like wipe it on the nose. Now I have done the gnomes without doing blush on the nose and they look kind of plain and some people like that, but I like it to have a little bit of blush on the nose so it looks like he's, you know, a gnome. He looks cute. He's outside and he's cold. So, that is the first thing I wanted to show you. Just put a little blush on the nose. I do find that if you use the brush, it kind of goes everywhere. So I tend to like to use my finger. I use my my hands, you know, as tools for everything, I think, anymore. Um, and what I'm going to do, being a hairdresser, I would call this an A-line. <laughs> I like to leave him a little bit longer in the front. And I don't necessarily think that everything needs to be even. I'm not that neurotic. But I do go in and I kind of cut some of these extra pieces off. Now, you, it will make a mess. You're going to want to, you know, do it somewhere that you can wipe it up easy or sweep it up easy. And I just kind of go along. And in the back, I cut it just a tad bit shorter. I go underneath. And anything hanging, like I said, I don't do it straight. I just kind of go in there and cut. This side's a little bit longer than the other side. That would be the hairdresser in me, I apologize. So he's, I'm holding it up in the air, you guys can't even see it. Um, but that's kind of what I do just to straighten him out. So you've got all this fluff right here. And then I kind of go like this again because some pieces will fall down a little bit more and I'll just cut off some of the excess. And that's how I even him out. Isn't he cute, you guys? People are loving these. So anyway, those are all the steps to my Valentine's gnome. And actually these are all the steps to my gnomes in general. I just decorate each hat accordingly to the holiday or time of year. So I started making these gnomes at Christmas because they seem to be a big deal. And I had so much fun and I had so many people buying gnomes from me that I decided, well, hey, you know, maybe I should like make Valentine's ones and I'll make Easter ones and winter ones. And so I made a winter one first and then I just moved on to Valentine's day and I'll be making some Easter ones. And what was so funny is I was watching YouTube and here I think I'm the only one that makes Valentine's gnomes. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> it's amazing what you find. So um, I wanted to share him with you. I thought he was really cute. And like I said, he was super popular uh, this year and um, so that is my rendition of a Valentine's gnome using Dollar Tree products on the most part. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I had a lot of fun making it and um, it's the first time I think I've really done two crafts in a video. If I did before, it was a long time ago, but I'm super, super enjoying this journey and I really, really do thank you all for watching, subscribing, hitting that like button and commenting. So thank you all and um, we'll see what I have coming up next. So what did you think of those DIYs? Did you like them? Were they fun? Do you think you'll attempt to make any of these? Which one was your favorite? Would you drop that in the comments below? Also, I forgot to tell you, hit that like button if you like this video because it helps support my channel. And until next time, next video, God bless everyone. Thank you for watching.